The year is 2001. Auntie Helen is running the country, and Zed Silencer takes out Album of the Year at the New Zealand Music Awards. M2 Music Television launches the broadcasting career of icon Jane Yee, <laughs> and Lord of the Rings puts Mata Mata on the map. The average house price in Auckland is $260,000, $253. Is that how you say that? Yeah. But it's mostly a pretty depressing year. 9-11 throws the entire world into chaos. Sir Peter Blake is killed by pirates. Xena Warrior Princess throws her last chakram, while Qantas NZ and NZ New Zealand fly their last flights. Meanwhile, a new TV format is just taking off, bringing a glimmer of hope in what is really a very shitty year. By taking stars from our stages, sports fields and screens and dumping them on a paradise to duke it out for charity. Join us as we remember when Celebrity Treasure Island first hit our screens. This is the Beachcomber, a huge catamaran that each day carries hundreds of tourists through the beautiful blue waters of Fiji, ferrying them to island hideaways. But today, there is no anticipation of luxury resorts on this boat. Instead, we're heading for somewhere very special, an uninhabited oasis that is about to become home to 14 well-known New Zealanders. On this rugged, remote island, they will be abandoned and left to fend for themselves. Left to live amongst sea snakes, sharks, rats, bats and wild goats. Left to battle the elements and each other. But theirs is also a special mission, because they are on a treasure hunt. Whatever they're expecting, being household names will not earn any one of these 14 special treatment. They will still have to build their own shelter, find their own food, solve the clues and ultimately uncover the treasure. As today we begin Celebrity Treasure Island. It was a real ride. I was, I know, it was a roller coaster, wasn't it? Welcome to Remember When, your weekly dose of pop culture, nostalgia, and Aotearoa, brought to you by The Real Pod. My name is Jane Yee, and I'm joined by the Chizo and Jaden to my brie, Alex Casey, and Duncan Grieve. Lovely to have you here wow. talking about our favourite thing in the whole wide world. So good to be here. Can I just say, what a thorough introduction that was. God, I feel like that was just the whole, the whole of human history. Did, did, it, did it put you straight back into 2001? Because I'd, I'd forgotten about the, the 9-11 part and was just like, this is just fun. And then it got so dark. I know. And then I was like, okay, well, she must be done. And she just kept going. I know, it just got worse Peter and worse. Peter Blake getting killed by pirates? Remember when? There were actually three other things that didn't make it in there just f- just for time, but I do want to share them. <laughs> um, Craig David's walking, I'm Walking Away oh. was the biggest oh. selling single. Um, Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory was the best-selling album. Wow. Yeah, I didn't realise it was quite that old, but there you go. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh, in amongst all this airline chaos, I mean, truly, actual airline, I mean, you know, but uh, Air New Zealand was on the brink as well. That was like the big news is that Air New Zealand had to be bailed out. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's right. I must answer it. It was good. It was like, it was a sort of a classy airline. I didn't even realise Qantas, Qantas New Zealand was a thing until I was oh, researching this. Oh, she was competitive this. in the skies, yeah. honestly. I was yeah. just really prepared to be talking about Frank Bunce and a bandana here. I didn't <laughs> know we'd be getting all this like, oh, I don't think we're going to have time airline for Airline check. Oh, we actually do. We need to. We do need to talk about Frank Bunce and a bandana. So Treasure <laughs> Island, as a show, had been going sporadically since 1997. It had two seasons. One in 97 and one in 99. And these were just with ordinary people and a smattering of Clark Gayford, um, who was, for all intents and purposes at the time, just an ordinary guy who happened to have like a radio show on a regional radio station. The first bloke was just a civilian He was back just then. a civilian back then. And then they really just uh, shook things up with a celebrity version in 2001. It was really confusing reading the Wikipedia page for this because... They continued on with the regular version and the celebrity version, 
But the regular version morphed into a celebrity version. So they had two going concurrently. One that was just like what we're going to talk about, the, the celebrity Treasure Island version. But the regular version, they started doing all stars in there and bringing celebrities into them. And then it's kind of like what we've done with the real pop. We're just like running two formats at the same time. And eventually they just were like, you know, normal people, boring and stuck with the celebrity version. Watching, and you can do, you can watch it on New Zealand on screen, the first ever episode of Celebrity Treasure Island proper. It's amazing that this show made it beyond <laughs> that season, honestly. I disagree. I'm, I'm surprised this isn't a global format. Like, it's... The, the, especially because conceptually, like it's weirdly, it's got little alone elements. I'm I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about alone now that I'm obsessed with it. But it's it's a much more raw show than than what it would become. Yeah, but also much more boring. I reckon. What do you reckon, Alex? I don't know. I thought it was really funny and hokey. Maybe it was not funny and hokey at the time, though. It was probably everyone was like, hmm, yes, what are they going to eat for dinner? <laughs> um, but I just loved it. Like, you're right. It, it feels much more pared back. The fact that, you know, one of the teams, they have no equipment. They have nothing. They have to build their own shelters yeah. from scratch. And they're sleeping seemingly on, like, a sarong on the, on the beach. With a measly mosquito net. Sally Ridge finds like washed up fishing line. Everyone's like, oh my God, we might be able to catch a fish. And I mean, Danny, what's his face? Danny Morrison. Killing a, killing a chicken with his bare hands. Like we would never get anything like that on television no. now. It's crazy. Danny Morrison's like, like I, I love, uh, the intro is so good. Like I, I have to disagree with you, Jane, about it, it being boring. The, the way that they introduce all the celebrities there's, there's just like this amazing kind of uh, writing style where they're like, Trent Bray might be able, really good at swimming, but he won't be able to swim his way out of this one. And every single person, every single person is like, here's what they're famous for, and that's why it's completely irrelevant <laughs> on this desert island. And then they had to talk about their fears, and Danny Morrison, uh, his fear is. I wonder if I'll get any sleep because you know what Sheila's are like. They just stay up all <laughs> night talking. Measuring <laughs> away. And, and, and Trent Bray, international swimmer, was scared of swimming in the water. Or <laughs> something like have a, a nibble on his toe. He's worried about cockles or something. I don't know. But look, it was it, it, the reason I say it's boring is it just it doesn't immediately get into like full on crazy challenges and drama straight away. You know, like it's very much figuring out what it is and the birth of what it's to become and we ha we're just not quite there yet with the drama is what makes it a really really but, but captivating show I think it's a different show it is a different and it's still it, great to, and I but, agree but it that's what I mean it's about, about it's almost predictive of where some reality TV would go in that it was more a little bit more naturalistic and less engineered especially for a celebrity type show to the point that Peter Keating so she was a previous winner from the normie, normie uh, part of Treasure Island and to the point where she, her voiceovers and her face, it's like she's presenting a documentary. Yeah. And it's so, so crazy. So much voiceover. And it's so it's so low energy. Like if you yeah. compare it to Chizzo, who is like just <laughs> screaming and his eyeballs are popping out and it's just like, it's so much. And she's just like, I'm Peter Keating and this is Treasure Island. <laughs> You're just I like, where am I? <laughs> I actually think what we should do at this point is, is just watch a little bit of that intro. Lining up against them in the North Camp and wearing a red bandana is Changing Rooms designer Sally Ridge, who fears life on an empty stomach. I love my food. I think I think that will, um, will hammer me a little bit because I'm such a sweet tooth. Former international cricketer Danny Morrison will have to vary his pace to cope with life here. My greatest fear? would have to be getting no sleep because you know what women are like? They talk all night. ZM Network DJ Nikki Sunderland is preparing for life without makeup or luxuries. I'm expecting hard work and lots of sun and to be wearing loads of sunscreen and no lipstick. But actor Anthony Ray Parker desperately wants to be there when the treasure is finally discovered. I like to win so I don't, I don't like, I don't want to lose. Uh, I'm expecting to see this to the end. Oh my god! Wow. A lot of people just worried about not eating. Sally Ridge very, very worried about not having licorice all sorts and like lollies and so on. Oh yeah, she says, she says, I, I miss licorice all sorts. I want a bag of licorice. I want rocket salad. Rocket and I was like, salad. shit, that's so <laughs> prego. <laughs> 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 but also I'm envisioning like a little plate of rocket with licorice just scattered on top. Yeah, it's a unique taste. 
It was it was incredibly well cast. Like we need to acknowledge the fact that the next decade, like these weren't like there are obviously some celebs who were probably around their peak at this time. But you get baby Dominic Bowden, oh. baby Stacey Daniels, like I know just so many and they're, they're little children, like tiny. That's tiny. Baby Sally Ridge, obviously. Do you know what the <laughs> craziest crap. thing for me about this um, this cast is you can't do the, I've never heard of them. Like every single person in this list. They're a household name. They're a household name. It's so, so cool how they keep saying that. I'm like, I'd forgotten about that phrase. <laughs> we've got we've got two teams. There's 14 celebrities in total. You've got the uh, very creatively named South Team, or Blue, <laughs> And you've got the also creatively named North Team or Red. Um, so on the South Team, you've got Frank, Frank Bunce, Nikki Watson, uh, Coxie, Katrina Hobbs, Dominic Bowden, Jane Kiley and Trent Bray. On the North Team, you've got Sally Ridge, Jenny Morrison, Nikki Sunderland, uh, Anthony Ray Parker, Stacey Daniels, a- Handy Andy Die, and Erica Tokarch. So they've, they've both it. got a builder, which feels very telling. Is that like sh- shelter is not provided, and you're going to need to make it yourself. But also really speaks to the TV, the other TV that was on at the time of these right. kind of like handymen who um, yeah. who were working in these like changing rooms type shows. I didn't. I, I completely forgotten that Sally Ridge was like the main changing rooms lady. Like she was the artistic visionary <laughs> yes. behind changing rooms. I also, when I know what I know now about her licorice all sorts obsession, I feel like. All the crafts that she did in the Women's Day make so much sense because they they all feel like they were uh, informed by the licorice all sort aesthetic. <laughs> totally. <laughs> the other thing that's crazy about Sally Ridge is like she looks like a teenager. Yeah. Mm. And within like six years, she's going to have like an eighteen year old daughter, and they're going to be like it's re- I, the time doesn't make sense in terms of how anyone kind of looks on this show. I was just going to say on the aesthetics as well. It's so amazing. The fashion is so incredible and also how much of it is now being worn by teenagers across the motto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the big Adidas track pants, the Katrina Hobbs, Paul Frank bucket hat, the little like coloured glasses. A lot of the sunglasses I'm like, I'm pretty sure Lance Savali wore all of these <laughs> on his season of Celebrity Treasure Island. It's just great to see everything come back, you know. I want to talk about that. Sorry, I just need to reference my own season of this great show. What? I want to talk about the sunglasses because we were not allowed sunglasses. And then they changed they changed it. They changed their minds to allow us to wear sunglasses after they had already taken all our gear away, but not before they'd taken all the celebrities' gear away. So they had sunglasses and we did not. But wow. that's a health and safety issue. Like the sun is so famously burnt his eyes that season. I know. So all the normies just putting our eyes on the line and Lance Savali with a whole wardrobe change of sunglasses. That is, that is class warfare. Yeah, that really again is. On anyway, our screen. Sorry, I don't mean to bang on about when I was on Celebrity Treasure Island. No, well, where can you watch that? TVNZ Plus? Or? Just Treasure Island. Just Treasure Island, actually, for me. For my camp, at least. Um, also, good to see the, the like, really low-slung, seven-eighth-length boardies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just mm. like the biggest boardies ever. I don't know if those are back yet. Maybe maybe that's on the horizon well, for next summertime. year. Hopefully we'll get a summer this year and we'll be able to find out. I mean, just everything, the bodies look different back then. Like, <laughs> guys weren't just like massively jacked all the time. Like, you wouldn't, they wouldn't let a guy look like Coxie go on. He would have to be like hulked out like he was TK to be allowed on TV. It was just a different era. The first challenge was a treasure hunt. Straight to the treasure hunt, clues. It's just like a kid's birthday party style treasure hunt. Well, it's also groundbreaking. I feel like something we have not talked about is the presence of phone networks and text speak <laughs> in this show. So it's like sponsored by... Is it DJ? DJ. So, okay, so it's not DJ... Ju- what is it? <laughs> no, it's DJ. And what was deduce? It was a form of juice. It was a bitter rival of Just Juice, I think, from memory, that uh, never quite made it. Oh, okay. I thought it was like some underground phone network. Because why no, was, it was so t- much? Because it was telecom as well. Oh, okay. I think maybe in my head, I thought the juice was like boost. <laughs> like the it boost definitely had the that time. vibe. <laughs> like I, you know what? I had the same thought. And then because I got really confused because I was fairly sure that Just Juice sponsored Treasure Island at some point too. So 
Well, at one point, Dominic Bowden does mention that he assumed he was going to be in a Just Juice commercial where there would be mangoes and passion fruits clashing above his head and juice <laughs> falling upon him, which I actually thought was like a very funny thing to say. I really enjoyed Dom Bowden on this show, can I just say? I feel like he was on fire, perhaps before he got kind of confined into his suit. Break it, and- breaking news, I think you might be right. I think I might be wrong. The juice... Short for Digital Juice is a ah. youth-based mobile phone plan ah. from Telenor about currently available in Montenegro and Pakistan. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and Fiji for just one moment. That's uh, crazy. When when Erica Tokac said she was going to miss having her cell phone, like, we've got no cell phones here, I was like, man, that was real early on in cell phone, cell phone life. Like, you love, think it was bad she then? She must love Snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, what is she missing? Like, 399 like, texts? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so the very first, the treasure hunt clues are deployed in this like hilarious text speak, which they're like, this is indecipherable. How am I ever going to figure this out? And all they've done is taken the vowels They've just taken the vowels out. (laughs) (laughs) But it just goes, it's such like, it's such an emblem of the time that it was like text speak could be a challenge in itself. Um, And all the way through the show, they're also running the sort of question thing where you send a text message to 2120 that probably costs you about $5 to win a trip to the islands or something. It just feels like it's such a simpler time <laughs> for technology, for television. Um, I think but, we had it right, though. Like, yeah. Just thinking about that moment, having a – like I'm sure that there's some kind of economic theory about when you just sort of attach a cost to something, it makes you value it. Like you wouldn't have like a – an endless back and forth text conversation when they cost 20 cents each. Like, you'd just be quite utilitarian with it. Our communication is too cheap now. I think that we need to go back to that era <laughs> and just make every bit of private co- communication extremely costly. Obviously, that's quite good for uh, for telecom and quite bad for us as consumers, but it would just chill us the fuck out as a society, I think. Is this your pitch to be the new CEO of De Juice? <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back. Duncan Juice. <laughs> I need to get, get hold of the Montenegrin branch and see if there's a, <laughs> an opening for a franchise. Yeah, so what happens in the treasure hunt? They sort of get the yeah, they get these indecipherable clues, which basically a big point of contention for one of the teams is whether TP means top or tip, and they end mm. up deciding that it means top. They climb to the top of the island. There's nothing there. They go to the tip of the island, and they end up having to wade through. Did you get to this part, like this crazy bog, which I was like, nobody would ever go in there in 2023. That is like health and safety. And they have to wade through and sort of, is it drench, dredge? I don't know, whatever it is where you like pull up a bunch of stuff yeah. from the floor and eventually dump out and finds this disgusting jar. It's just all so, yeah, it truly feels like <laughs> alone. Like they are out there with nothing yeah. and the clues are tiny and there's not a lot of like set building or anything, you know? Deduce. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, I just don't know if a celebrity because they they make a lot of points in the in the narration about you know celebrities are used to this kind of luxurious lifestyle. They'll be expecting all this stuff, and then it's it is kind of wild to think that you would take so, so, celebrities because celebrity they used to mean something back then. And this is the time of like spy. You yeah, know, and well, guess who don't sue? And when you saw one, you would literally shit your pants. Yeah, mm. and need a lie down. It was so exciting, and you—they just dropped them on an island, seemingly with like cameras and nothing else. And it was just like good luck, amazing, amazing thing to have the, happened. The, the set budget, you know, that they, they, they would have the, the accountants would have been very happy mm. with the uh, the line in the set budget because seemingly no no set budget. <laughs> And also, I mean, like, Handy Andy and, and Coxie, they're on the clock two ways because oh, yeah. they are building. <laughs> yeah. Coxie's one. Coxie's camp is, like, incredible. He creates this, like, amazing circular structure and everyone pitches in and builds their own stakes so everyone has their own exit. I mean, Handy Andy Die kind of, like, strings up a leaf between some yeah. trees and calls I, it a day. I mean, there definitely was another level of competition going on just between those two outside of the the whole Treasure Island thing, yeah. uh, clear, which 
Coxie absolutely won, and in fact went on to win the uh, the entire season. Um, what a hero! With uh, with Stacey Daniels, friends of the network, she's got a podcast on our network, Conversations That Count. No, Kore Rofaitake, have a listen. Uh, quite a different vibe to to Treasure Island, um, and yeah, the the interesting thing about how they're playing. They're playing for twenty thousand dollars for youth light, but they're all playing for the same charity. I know, so there is no right. youth light. Just sitting there going, the fix is in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got this. It's like if you, this, yeah, this, this, the stakes are so low. If you go home, doesn't matter. Youth line is still getting the money. Uh, totally, mm. you could, they could all just give up on day one. Yeah. Youth, line, youth Line's got this. Youth Line's just sitting there going, that sweet 20K. <laughs> that is actually a really good house deposit, as we know in Auckland. Um, true. Yeah, I wondered, like, chunk. we maybe need Bernard Hickey on this, but, like, $20,000 in 2001, is that the same as $100,000 in 2023? Like, what's the adjustment Should I call there? him up? I'm just going to call <laughs> Bernard Hickey. Uh, yeah, call him up. Um, look, when you think about it this way, it's, it's basically j- just shy of 10% of a house deposit. <laughs> For the mm. average house price in Auckland. Right, so that's how they adjust it accordingly <laughs> over the years. It must be. It must be. <laughs> He's probably hosting some, like, the probably talks to the Prime Minister. He probably is. <laughs> Kia ora, Bernard. How are you? Good, thanks. Just, just turning off the road. Yep. Um, have you got a moment? You're live on the real pod, and we were just, um, we're, we're talking about Celebrity Treasure Island, the first season from 2001, and... It was a period in which the the average Auckland house is about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and the prize money is twenty thousand dollars. And we're trying to get a sense of what an inflation adjusted twenty grand might look like in twenty twenty three. And we thought we'd call in the host of When the Facts Change, our economic <laughs> god, just to give us a bit of a sense. Do you, do, you, do you have anything off the off the top of your head which might answer that question? Yeah, it depends uh, which inflator you use. If you use the same inflator as for house prices, then um, that $20,000 would be worth um, around uh, $90,000. Okay. If you use the same inflator as for consumer prices, um, it would be more like uh, $30,000. So essentially it depends what you do with the $20,000. If you chose to um, leverage it up with a big old loan, and put it into a, um, a piece of land, then you'd be stonkingly rich. If you choose to put it into the um, savings account and then just uh, slowly use it to, to buy cups of coffee, then um, you probably wouldn't be so rich. But, um, yeah, it really depends on uh, which type of inflation you want to choose. That's incredible. Uh, based on this, the celebrities on this season, I'm going to guess it was more likely to go on licorice all sorts and take away coffee. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing it's frittered away by now. Um, Bernard, thank you so much for the, this cameo. Uh, Thanks, Bernard. Really, Jeez, really no appreciate worries. it. Kakite. Cheers. Catch up. Bye-bye. They're not doing that on the Herald podcast, are they? <laughs> he pulled off the road for that. What a legend. Yeah. When the facts change indeed. I know this about Bernard. It's difficult to do two things at once. So he did, <laughs> he, did, he did need to pull off the road to make sure that he could focus on this very important, you know, economics journalism. Uh, interesting what he had to say. So so they've kind of really, they've gone down the house inflation route for mm. sure. I suspect that that 20K, um, that youth line probably spent on coffee. Yeah. For the for the people on the for phones. the volleys, yeah, for the volleys, True. they should have bought a house. That would have been a lot of coffees back yeah. there. Um, quickly on the controversy of the episode, there was contraband found in some of the bags. Danny had a muesli bar, which he swore was his daughter's that he did not know about, which I kind of believe because yeah, even I two days that. in, two days in, they'd eaten nothing. If he had been, you know, and they were all starving, he hadn't touched it. Yeah, but how, we don't know how many muesli bars he'd already put away by that point. Good point. Good point. Good mm. point. Well I made. Don't know. Danny is a guileless man. He's not unproblematic, but he's guileless. Okay. <laughs> I just can't get over him killing that chicken. That's one of the craziest things I've seen on television. He's just like, look away, ladies! And he just, like, breaks its neck. And then you see him pulling all the feathers off. I mean, I know that's what chicken is, but I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it on my TV. This is the classic problem, right? We're happy to eat it, but we're not happy to kill it, you know? Not Danny. The fact that it was sort of like captured and put in a box for the show, you just never, it would just never happen now. Um, also, what would never happen, oh, well, Jane, you might be able to feed back on this. Uh, Nikki Sunderland smuggles cigarettes into the <laughs> island. 
<laughs> and gets caught when a loose cigarette falls out of her bag. Um, your thoughts? My thoughts are that I believe it is, if you're extremely wily, um, I don't think you could smuggle it in, but I think you could find a way to secure mm. one. Interesting. That's all I'll say. Very interesting. What production don't know, unless they've watched the very show that they're filming at the time, is that <laughs> Nikki, is that Nikki has also smuggled in a lipstick. <laughs> oh, Which, she was. She had the lipstick lunch. That was her radio show, so that's just a bit of clever pl- promo. Ah, is that why? Because she also is wearing a T-shirt yes. that says lipstick on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, they have these little confession cams. You know, I like seeing the influence of, like, clearly it was, like, the big... Big Brother era, they have these little confession cams with the little frame and stuff. That 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 kind of um, pretense is gone, obviously, now from Treasure Island. It's very much we are in an interview with somebody. Oh, no, we had GoPros and we did talk to them. They just don't hardly ever use them. True, but they don't put the kind of frame over them no. with the recording red light and all the kind of hoopla. <laughs> I think the last time we saw that was when Lance Savali did his midnight mission with the GoPro to meet, to meet Chris or Chris. What yeah. a great time. Um, yeah, and then the episode ends with them. They've basically all got nothing. I mean, they've eaten, they've eaten the chicken. I think Coxie won a pair of pyjama pants and they end up having this weird sort of trade but it just feels like there's no structure there's no real um provisions of any kind and they just have to sit on a beach and go what do you got nothing i mean basically what do you, you can got? imagine nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like the, this pitch arriving at tvnz and it's very short it might be a paragraph it's just like celebrities on an island we'll put some cameras there there's no stuff and TV and says, right, here's $2 million. And Julie Chris is like, hell fucking yeah. I'm off to Prago. <laughs> oh, it's the, the greatest shame is that the full series isn't sitting sitting somewhere for us to watch. Someone yeah. buy the Touchdown Archives. Oh, please, please. Well, and that's, that's, uh, that's us. We just remembered when. We just remembered when. Thank you so much for, for of course, remembering when with us. Thank you to De Juice. Thanks uh, to De Juice. Mobile, the sponsors of this episode. Can't wait to have a big tall glass of De Juice after this. <laughs> uh, thank you to Samuel. Don't forget um, we have, well Celebrity Street Island is about to, to kick off the new season and we are recapping it. This is our bread and butter. This is where we are most at home and do some of our best material and if that's not a sell, I don't know what is. Please join our paid Substack to get those bonus episodes of The Real Pod uh, releasing every week. Analyzing every moment of Celebrity Treasure Island 2023. We say farewell to Treasure Island 2001. From the Spin Off Podcast Network, you've been listening to The Real Pod, hosted by me, Jane Yee, along with Alex Casey and most of the time, Duncan Grieve. Our producers are T.I. Hear Butler and Samuel Robinson. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm. 